2008 BMW Z4 front brake pads and rotor replacement. I'm Brian Essex from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through that process. So we're going to start by getting the vehicle up in the air and if you're doing this at home use floor jacks and jack stands and jack them up on the jacking points underneath where the little rubber pads are and go ahead and remove your front wheels. So now that we got the wheel off what I like to do is turn the, uh, the wheel to the I'm working on the driver's side here, so I turn the wheel to the right so I can work with the caliper and the rotor here. And the first thing we're going to do is remove this clip. So what you're going to do is put a screwdriver in here and pry the clip out like that. And uh, you can use both hands and uh, one hand to pull, pull the clip out. Now that the clip is removed, we need to come on the back side of the caliper here. And on the, uh, they have these little caps, plastic caps. Like this, you need to remove that one. And there's going to be another one below. So remove that. So after removing the caps off, we can go ahead and remove the uh, the brake leader uh, little cap here and pop up the uh, the little connector for the uh, pad lining sensor. And then here on behind the strut, you can pop it out of its little rubber perch. And then you follow it around, remove it from the perch here on the firewall or on the fender well. And then you can open this little door here by pulling the little tabs back and pull out the uh, electrical connector and disconnect it. So now inside these little, where, the, where we took the cap off, inside there is a seven millimeter Allen. So we need to remove the, the two bolts to hold the caliper on. So once you get those removed, and pull the pins completely out and set them aside. We're going to lube these up later and put them and reinstall them. So now we need to get the caliper off but because the rotors, they develop these lips. They won't allow the uh, caliper to come off. So what I like to do is take a little screwdriver and you can actually put it in the caliper and pry the caliper over a little bit and that'll depress the piston just a little bit and then you can work the uh, caliper off. So once you get the caliper off, you can go ahead and just set it on top of the rotor, on the suspension like this for a second. And now we're going to remove this bracket here. Go ahead and remove the outer pad here. Set that aside. And then on the back side, there's going to be two 16 millimeter uh, bolts. So you're going to remove that one and that one. So once you get the uh, bracket unbolted, just set that aside for now. So now we need to remove the rotor. And there's an Allen screw here. But before we take it out, I like to take one of the uh, lug nuts and screw it in the lug nut, in one of the holes, and remove the six millimeter Allen. So now that we take the Allen off, most likely the rotor will be kind of rusted onto the hub. So the reason why I put a lug nut in there is I'm going to take a, a hammer. I'm going to, since we're not using the rotor anymore, we're going to replace it. I'm going to smack it from behind, and that's going to break this free. And then uh, what this does is prevent it from flying off and falling on your feet or falling on the floor. So after popping it free, you can just take your lug nut off and take your, your rotor off. Now you can go ahead and put your new rotor on and put your uh, six millimeter Allen back in and tighten it up. And if your rotor has was shipped and it has the oil on the Cosmoline oil or whatever, go ahead and wipe it off with brake clean and clean the surface. So now we need to take our, our caliper bracket here and we need to clean the channels out where the brake pads ride. So a little wire brush like this and just scrub out the channel and then make sure there's no major pits or anything like that where the brake pads will catch up and hang or stick. If there are pits or there's something in it, then you may have to replace the caliper and the caliper bracket. But if you're in good shape, then uh, after you get it cleaned out. So after you get the caliper brackets cleaned out, you're gonna take your, your bolts to hold the bracket on and put a little blue uh, thread locker or Loctite on it. This happens to be Permanex brand, um, is the type we use. And this is like a little glue to prevent the bolts from vibrating loose and backing back out. They don't have lock washers, so this prevents that from happening. So after that, you can go ahead and bolt these back up. Now that the caliper bracket's back up, bolted back up, and these uh, 16 millimeters on the back are torqued down. What we're gonna do next is take our piston here on the caliper 
and press it back into the bore. And you also want to inspect the, the, the uh, caliper pist uh, boots here and make sure that they're in good okay. shape. We're going to press these pistons in right here back into the bore and we're going to use it like a C clamp like this and you uh, put it on the pad and you screw the C clamp in it and it pulls the piston back in. And uh, we're not, when we do this, we're not going to open the bleeder screw. So what happens when you do that, do it this way, the fluid will push back up the brake hose and back up into the master cylinder. So we need to, we need to remove a little bit of brake fluid from the uh, master cylinder to pop off the cap and suck out an ounce or two. Because when you push those uh, the brake fluid, the pistons back in, the brake fluid will rise up, and if it's over full, it'll spill out and possibly damage the cap and make it create a mess in the bay. So what I like to do is just suck out an ounce or two before I push the pistons in. So once the pistons are pushed all the way in, you can go ahead and pop out your old pad and pull the wire, the wire through. So now that the pistons pushed it in and the pads removed, um, we're gonna prep the new pads and put them in the caliper and on the bracket here. And uh, there's one important step at the end of this. I want uh, I don't want you guys to to, to skip. It's a uh, critical for uh, making sure there's no air in the system. So to prep the brake pads, what I did was I took a little, uh, it's called Seal Glide. It's a brake calip brake loop and it's made out of a, a silicone base and it doesn't break down with heat. And um, you can get little tiny, little, just enough to do the brake job, like a little packet, you know, at your part supplier. You don't need a big tub like this. But so what I did was I put a little thin layer on the back of the on the back of the shims of the, the of the new brake pads. And now that I got that done, I'm gonna take the one with the clip and press that into the caliper and put the outer pad on the bracket. Now I'm gonna slip the caliper on over the uh, over the uh, bracket. You want to make sure that the brake hose itself is not twisted in any way. Next, we want to take these pins that we took off and we want to lube them up and clean them up really good. So you're going to use that same Seal Glide brake caliper grease or any brake grease designed for brakes and put a thin layer of the grease on there and then you're going to slide it back into the calipers in the top and bottom and then uh, then you can go ahead and um, tighten these up once they're tight then you can take the caps and put them back on the boots after the caps are back on now you're going to take the, the clip and put it back on and the way you do it is you you put it in position like so and with your thumbs you push it in like that and you want to give it a good pull to make sure that it, it catches from here and here and it's not going to pop back off. So now that the clip is on, now we need to put our brake line, uh, sensor in. So you're going to put it with a little nipple like that. So it's going to go in like this. And so you're going to reach around the back and just push it into the new brake pads. And push it on with your fingers until it seats in there. Next, you're going to take the um, little... Uh, I don't know what they call it, a little catch here, and put it over the brake bleeder, and you take the brake bleeder and uh, put it over the top of the, uh, and that holds it secure. Now you got to route it through the, uh, the suspension here and re -put, and and, uh, and put the grommet back in the little catch here. Then loop it around and put the the second grommet in the catch here. Now you're going to take the two electrical connectors and plug them in together. After they're plugged in, then you can go ahead and put them back into the little little door here that it's in. And then you can go ahead and close the door and make sure that the little catches snap shut. Now that that's all secure, now you're going to put your wheel back on, torque it down, duplicate the same thing on the opposite side, except for the opposite side is not going to have the uh, sensor. Only the uh, only one side. So on this particular vehicle, the left front will have the sensor, and, and the right rear will have the sensor if you're doing the rears. Um, now you're going to lower the vehicle down. After you got the wheel back on and torqued, you're going to pump your brake pedal six, seven times, 
until you push the fluid back from the master cylinder back into the calipers. And then um, you should have a nice firm p uh, pedal before you drive the car. If you pump it six, seven times and for some reason you don't have a firm pedal, then you need to bleed the, uh, the brake system. And uh, that pretty much completes the front brake uh, pads, rotors, and sensor replacement on a 2008 uh, BMW Z4. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive, and I'd like to thank you for watching my videos and encourage you to subscribe for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again.